welcome. Today we're going to dive a little deeper into the command access locking hardware power supplies. Let's jump in. So let's start off by showing you how to hook up to 120 by putting the black in the line voltage, the white in the neutral, and the green in the ground. You're going to double up on the ground with the ground included in the power supply can. You can see that I snipped it here just to be able to remove the lid for demonstration purposes. Not recommended for real life installations. Once powered up, you'll see that the red LED lights up. That's going to go on your cover as an easy visual to show that 120 is coming into the power supply. It is removable, so we'll put that aside. Starting on the main board, we can see the green LED is on showing that our relay board is being powered and on the PS220 we have our two-door relay board with power tap included. You can see that I jumpered the input on door 2 so that it can be constantly powered as we can see by the green light. So 1 and 2 will need a input to trigger the output and the power tap is going to be constantly powered for a door controller, logic module, PRI, access control, camera, anything like that. Another great feature is our short circuit detection. Each output is individually fused with the resettable fuse. So if at any time there is a short, the output will turn off while the other door and power tap will continue working as normal. As soon as the short is removed, the light fires right back up. A great feature when you're not having to spend your time finding replacement fuses. So now let's learn how to hook up to a motorized latch retraction kit. All of our connectors are easily removable. So you do your wiring on the ground and set your head up in the ceiling. We're going to start off by hooking up power for our motor kit. And while these are non-polarity sensitive, we're going to stick to the standard of red for positive and black for negative, matching with our output board. Using a small flathead screwdriver, I will secure those. And just to give you a closer look, something to look out for is making sure that before you connect either your input or output, that the jaws on our connector are dropped all the way down. So as you secure, the wires are in between the jaws and secured correctly as opposed to if they are up too high. It may look like the wires are secure, but they're underneath the jaws. And as soon as you tug on them, they could pop right out. So next we're gonna hook up our trigger on the input and we're just using a simple push button. But again, this could be anything from a push button to a card reader, a timer, it's just a simple dry contact that's going to come off your access control board. Now we're ready to easily plug back in our connector for our first door and test out our power supply. So I'm going to plug in the output lead into our motor with our easy two pin connector. Now I can grab our push button and close that contact and firing off our motor. I'm going to set our simple motor adjustment with our push to set. Now we can see that as I push that push button it closes the contact, the green light lights up showing me that power is being applied to our motor as soon as that contact is closed. And as long as I have that button down, power will stay present. So to review, push button, simplest form of access control. You could tie it into a timer, into our input or dry contact from your access control board. All we need is the signal from the dry contact. If I wanted to use one trigger or signal to fire off both doors in double door scenarios, I can just jumper the normally opens on both input 1 and 2, and that will fire off both doors simultaneously. Another great feature is our trim pot voltage adjustment. So you can dial down or dial up the voltage depending on your wire run. 
the adjustment range is anywhere from 23.7 to 27.2 and is factory set right around 24 and a half. Our VC2412 voltage converter is a great option when you need to power up something that is 12 volts. It is polarity sensitive, so make sure you hook up the red to positive and the black to negative. I'm going to hook it up to my meter here just to show you that that incoming voltage that was 24 is now being converted to send out 12 volts DC. Thanks for joining us on this in-depth review.